date to make that payment. It, it, it almost is being talked about at the beginning, the way it sort of wor is worded, that um, it doesn't look like it's necessarily a given. And is it a given with respect to the budget? And if so, when is that expected to be an actual, uh, an actual payment made? Well, we were hoping, um, the reason why I've included it in the summary as, as I have is because the $500,000 that was removed from the AMP payment is due, and I can have our auditor controller tell you the exact time, um, in this fiscal year. And I'm putting it in the summary this way because it is our hope that if we have any fund balance this year available, that our first priority is to pay back a debt that... Uh, you know, and make up our amortization as we have anticipated and we're anticipating. Since this $500,000 for the teeter plan was not, has not been paid, or you know, is projected not to be paid for the for, for the final for this budget year, um, we're hoping that it, that part of this fund balance that we're showing here will be paid for this fiscal year for the teeter plan, because it has it was budgeted not to be paid up front, and. Our auditor controller can tell you exactly the time frame. Meredith? Meredith Ford, auditor controller. Typically, we take a look at um, the teeter payments at the end of the fiscal year. Now, that's uh, given if the teeter amount has been budgeted, uh, then we would automatically make the payment. This year, we're going to take a look and see if we can carve out that $500,000 just to keep our amortization schedule current. And if, if we don't, then we're going to fall further behind Absolutely. On that. And last year's delinquencies were much higher than, than previous years due to the housing downturn. Well, I think it's time to maybe revive the teeter discussion. I believe the board was going to look at it more in depth and it was a concern of the board. And we had um, sort of a targeted focus during the budget process on it. But uh, I think it's time to sort of renew that discussion and, and have the board take a look at that and build that component or that discussion um, point into our budget discussion because I know there was board and I think it was pretty general board concern about teeter and trying to approach teeter and I think we made the commitment to approach teeter in a different way through this budget cycle so I guess I'd like to know where we're going with that making sure that we'll be having information on that up front prior to getting into the actual deliberations on the budget and then also seeing where our actions or lack thereof in this budget cycle will impact that discussion. I think um, Allison was planning to cover a bit of that in the budget uh, uh, PowerPoint. Good. Thank you. Good. Supervisor Pinscher. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think the, my recollection <coughs> of that conversation was that the CEO's office at the time, that was Mr. Beltrami and the uh, auditor's office was supposed to get together and set up a teeter plan repayment structure with basically that was set aside on its own, you know. The direction was we put the $600,000 in contingency with a commitment to the sheriff if he needed to. It's under your proposal here, the sheriff really actually doesn't need that. So that $500,000 can be used to make that teeter plan. But the main point is, is the teeter plan was supposed to be set up on a repayment schedule, kind of set aside on its own for the amortization and pay off of that. And we're showing it that way in its yeah. own budget unit in, yeah. in the fiscal year 2007-2008. And in 2008-09, our plan is to take the actual um, collections off of the delinquencies and put them against the teeter deficit so that it's a lot clearer. Take it out of budget unit 1000. I got a couple other questions. Sure. On this sheet that we got here on the revenues, it, on, on items actually, the line item 7 and 30 says prior year secured taxes, there's a, a $2.5 million gap mm -hmm. there between last year and what's it, or between the 2708 projected and the 28 preliminary. And also you go down to line 30, it says prior year, year revenue, there's last year it was 400,000, or in the, it was 400,000, now it's projected next year. How, how come there's, that shows the biggest gap in the revenues? What's the ex explanation of that? In the, the $400,000, that was the prior year revenue was uh, what Ms. McMenemy had said was going to be the uh, insurance reimbursement on Mill Creek. 
Mill Creek Dam. And it hasn't come in. It hasn't come in yet, but we are anticipating that it is coming in. And in fact, she mentioned that it should probably be a little bit higher than the 400,000. But since I don't have any way to quantify that right now, I don't plan to change that estimate. And because it would come in this year, so that's why it's the next zero in, in, in eight, eight, eight nine. nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What What's the uh, uh, line? The current supplemental tax secured tax. Why is the big difference there? Uh, in current secured, um, I was anticipating that the unitary value would remain flat last year or in 2007-8, and it actually came up with an increase of 12.5%, which was an anomaly, like just way bizarre. Um, also, there was a change in the uh, in the allocation of um, incremental growth for the Fort Bragg Redevelopment Agency that came back to the county. Um, there was a significant amount of money that went to the Fort Bragg RDA because of the change in value for the Georgia Pacific property. And it just, it just so happened that that 2007-8 was also the year that we changed how, how, we get, how the county gets back some of its increment toward the, the RDA in Fort Bragg. So that was hard to quantify at the time that the, the budget was built and I didn't have the full uh, set of values to work with at that time. So it's it's actually in it higher than what we anticipated. Mr. Chairman, one more. <coughs> actually, it's more of a comment than a question. In our budget, in our this year's budget, we were projecting a $2.7 uh, million dollar figure for overtime, which I think is extremely high. But anyways, <coughs> that's what it's budgeting. If you actually look at this, uh, I just run up the numbers on this, uh, the salary overtime. It's running at, at about three and a half million dollars a year in overtime. You know that's that's three quarters of a million dollar. We're running over what we're even projection. And when you look at this county, I don't think we've really had any incidences in this county, whether it's the sheriff's department or uh, uh, any other issues, to where, you know, there's this big need of a jump up in overtime. I mean, certainly the budget, you know, two point seven million dollars for this county. Is a lot of money for overtime, in my opinion, in the first place. And then all of a sudden, to have it jump up three quarters of a million dollars. I remember when I was on the board, we had a real uh, a, a bad situation in Round Valley once with the murders over there, and that run up a lot of law enforcement. Yeah, but if you look back in, in this last year, the six months we're into in this last year, previously, I mean, there's got to be a, a bigger attempt on, on on this overtime at all levels. It it indicates to me a, a kind of a, a a lackluster level of management. I mean, well, I, it, it has to be, you know, overtime, when, when you're in any business and you, you know, overtime can be a good thing because that means there's more going on. Although at the county service is probably a bad thing. But it, it needs to be managed and I don't think we're, we're you know, that, that's $750,000 uh, looking forward from now on is a lot of money and, and uh, we need to get a handle on that overtime. In my opinion, in this whole uh, budget projection here, that's that's the, the main thing that we need to address, in my opinion. Is that countywide, the 3.5 that you're talking about, the yes. overtime? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, I believe in the sheriff's office, which is where the bulk of it is going to be, is it, it's a reflection of their staffing issues. And I believe Sheriff Allman can probably address I, that. I understand mm -hmm. that. But keep in mind, we all, we, I'm saying we're already budgeted 2.7 mm -hmm. million in overtime mm -hmm. and to go over that another three quarters of a million dollars i mean we've got to get a handle i'm not i'm not looking at any single department and certainly there's reasons for that i hope there's reasons for it but we've got to get a handle on that because we can't keep going over a budget that amount and, and especially with decreasing revenues and keep up we're going to have to do a better job and it's the little things that are make the difference i mean I don't think the cuts, you know, the CEO just identified basically a billion, one hundred million dollars in cuts for the, that the states said they're going to make. Well, their deficit is growing faster than the cuts that they're proposing. So it's the states running into a wreck, and it's going to come down to the counties, and we're going to have to start working on little things to stay in line, because I think if we do three little things, it'll it'll avert us from having to do one major thing. Because I don't want to, you know, when I was on this board before, I said in there they were talking about furloughs and layoffs, and I don't want that to happen. And so I think there's things that we need to, we see the the wreck coming, and we 